George, uh, Dr. Ben Carson is standing right over here. He seemed to have a pretty good night. He was, as usual, very low key, and he did something that I'm going to ask him about. You know, he said, "Look, I, I've reevaluated something. I, I was supporting uh, these uh, these subsidies for oil, and you know, I've looked at this, and uh, I don't think it's a good idea anymore. That's a little unusual." Isn't that amazing? To, and I think this is what makes him refreshing. Is he says, I thought of something, I changed my mind on it, I wish I'd have done it a different way. That kind of candor without explanation beyond that, without equivocation, I think is refreshing. I also think that people look at him and they see a guy who is not shaped or molded or encouraged by political punditry or uh, consultants, that that's just him. And I think that makes him powerful. But I think a lot of people, and I'm not, I'm not talking about Republicans, I'm, we're, we're really talking about the base here. These are people who are going to vote in a primary. You're talking about the base. Yes. I think a lot of people around the country are saying, but can he run the country? Can, you know, what about foreign policy? What about the economy? I mean, good man, good ideas uh, from the outside, right. but you're sitting in the Oval Office, uh, you know, that's another issue. I think it's a fair question. I mean, for someone that has been a brilliant and world-class doctor to take on a much different role, a much bigger project, I agree with you. I think that's a fair question. But I also think that what people want more than, hey, I've been in government a long time, I know how to run it, is authenticity, credibility, integrity, and he oozes those things. But wouldn't he be better as a senator, let's say, uh, to learn the ropes and to bring that that those qualities to, to the Senate, let's say? I'd say... Four, eight years ago, maybe that would have been the path, but you can tell from the electorate, frankly, at least on the Republican side of things, having experience in Congress is actually a negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but again, you're smooth. talking about a very, um, you're talking about a very specific group of Republicans here. You're talking about those who are, you know, primary, true. those people who are, 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 you know, true blue Republican voters. True. Um, so the question is, in a general election, uh, you know, you go up against Hillary Clinton, uh, or or you go up against Bernie Sanders, and, you know, Dr. Carson, the question is going to be, can you run the country? I think it's a fair question. I also think, though, that, look, we have allowed ourselves to be in a position where the president, as powerful as he is, we don't think he's making all the decisions all right. by himself. We surround him, and he surrounds himself, or in this case, maybe even herself, with super qualified subject matter experts in the areas that are important. And I don't deny that he couldn't do that. Me personally, I'd like to see the field whittled down. And whether Dr. Carson is on the stage or not is as important to me as there needs to be more time for more interaction and more questions. And I think when you get out to the periphery on that stage, I'm not sure this process misses much by excluding a couple of those folks out on the edge. Yeah. The other thing is, is that when you were looking at, at the Republican Party, I mean, there's a great deal right now of fragmentation in the party uh, to the to the point where, as things are whittled down, the question will be, you know, can you govern? And that's really always the question when it comes down to the general election. When you look at that stage, you some people say, well, you know, some people could govern, some people couldn't. Do you see people, I'm not going to ask you who, sure. but, but do you see people on that stage where you're saying, you know what? Uh, we don't have a prayer if that person goes into a general election. Not in terms of governance. In terms of being able to win a general election, I might have those concerns. But I say this candidly. I would take any one of the people on that stage over the possibility of another Clinton presidency from either Hillary or Bill all day and all night. I don't have the same concerns I have about corruption and integrity with any of the other people up on that stage. But in a general election, do you think the electorate, the general electorate, feels the same way. I, I do feel like in a general election there are so many other dynamics at play and we'll see that whether or not all of the people up on that stage are electable I think remains to be seen uh, but there you look at that stage though John that is the most diverse collection of presidential candidates that we have seen in many many years. Well especially for the Republican Party. Oh yeah absolutely for the Republican Party but you look at this year the the Democrat side of things is all a bunch of uh, older white folks, whereas this is a group of young, dynamic, you've got Latinos, you've got African Americans, you've got men, women, a woman on there. I mean, this is a pretty dynamic group for any party, but certainly for the Republican Party. I agree with you. The, the, the one thing, I'm going to look over here and see if, uh, if uh, Dr. Carson, yeah, he's still, he's st he's, he's still, he said, he, he said he's close, he's going to yeah. come on over. Right. Um, but as we're talking about the other candidates, uh, you know, Huckabee was very uh, forceful tonight. He had some really good things to say. 
even Republicans I talk to in the room, I mean, they're saying Mike Huckabee's never going to be president, but he's bringing a dimension, he's bringing uh, uh, thoughts and values into the into the party, into the uh, election that that are needed. Agree? Well, I agree. I think he is a big-hearted and yet big government Republican. I don't think he can get out of the primary with that sort of approach, but he's eloquent. There, you're going to find few people that are as good on the stump, off the cup as, uh, cuff as this guy is. And I love his analogy between the runaway blimp and the yeah. federal government. Every debate, he has something very good just like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me see if uh, Dr. Carson is here. No, he's still over there. So uh, they're going a, l a little bit long. Boy, when uh, Donald Trump leaves, it's like a fire drill. It was like a t <laughs> people just fled. Yeah, you can see uh, you can see him uh, him moving on. This this uh, large large group of people behind us uh, are uh, are talking with Donald Trump. Let's go to Mark Stewart. Mark, what do you got over there? 